Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Metastar YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about how we as writers can survive and even maybe flourish in the age of artificial intelligence if a computer can write as well as you can. If when you go back to your novel or short story or blog post or guest editorial, whatever it is you're writing, and you can't tell which paragraphs you wrote and which parts are written by a computer, what does that even mean about your existence, right? So I had that crisis of conscience a couple of months ago when I first started playing around with ChatGPT. And um, when I started reading about how authors were using this technology and basically the authors who are doing it well, when, when they go back and review the text, they can't tell the parts that they wrote from the parts the computer wrote. Now, there's a lot of bad chat GPT generator writing out there. Um, by default, chat GPT defaults to something that sounds like a Wikipedia summary. So you have to do a little bit of prompt engineering to get it to write something that sounds like something you wrote. But it is possible. And once you have the technique down, you can produce an unlimited number of work. And which means that writers are going to be replaced by computers. And some news organizations have already begun doing that. And since my day job is a journalist, this is a particular concern of mine. Like, why, why am I even in this business, right? So, um, so my first moment was panic, but then I did a bit more research, did a little bit more thinking, a little bit of talking to my therapist, you know, the usual. And um, I think I've, I figured out a way out. So, um, so, so what I'm offering is something I'm calling the peanut principles. And they're based on Google's own recommendation for content. So um, Google's recommendations for content is for both AI and human written content. And um, so Google wants content that's useful in order for it to be exposed in uh, the search engine. Uh, and there's plenty of AI generated content that Google considers useful. So the peanut principles are a variation of that, except focusing on what makes human writing special. So let's get started. Okay, so the first of the peanut principles is P is for personal. So this is writing that highlights your personal experience of the topic. So um, if you are a nonfiction author, uh, this is pretty easy. So for example, if you're doing writing a review of a new product, you actually use the product and you show what the product you show yourself using the product. You talk about, if, if you're just writing, you talk about what it was like. You really bring your personal experience into it. If you're a fiction writer, you do the same thing. You bring your personal experience into your writing, and then you communicate this fact to your public. So, for example, the reason that Taylor Swift songs are so popular isn't uh, necessarily because of her writing. I mean, I, I guess her writing is really good. Uh, maybe she writes all her songs herself. Maybe she has an assistant or a, t a staff of assistants or an AI helping her write them. But that's not the important part. The important part that makes people care about her writing is because it's based on her personal experience. So these songs are about her exes. These songs are about her personal struggles. So we care about her Therefore, we care about the songs. So you want to bring that to your writing. Um, and, for, and for me as a journalist, this is hard. I'm supposed to leave myself out of my writing. That's how I was trained. And so now I have a feeling that publications are going to be leaning into the personal and showcasing the fact that the people who work there have personal experience of the material that they are covering. And we've kind of been heading that way for a while now. Um, I think it comes and goes in waves, how much of a personal take uh, journalists are supposed to have. 
Um, and I think that now it's going to lean much more towards the personal because an AI has no personal experience of a product. I mean, you could have an AI pretend to have a personal experience, but it would be lying. Um, and at a certain point, the publication loses credibility if it publishes a lot of lies. You kind of want to avoid that. Um, next, we have E for emotional, which is kind of related to personal. Um, and here you want to highlight uh, the emotional meaning of what you're writing about. So if you're writing about a product review, the, does it help address people's fears about particular technology? Does it help? Does it hook into people's hopes or dreams? Make that emotional connection, either with the reader or with yourself. This is what this product means to me emotionally. Um, people have emotions. Computers don't have emotions. So lean into the fact that you have emotions, that your readers have emotions, and also highlight that outside of the text itself. So in your author bio, in your YouTube videos, in your social media posts, bring up the emotional connection between you, between the readers, and the subject of what you're writing about. Uh, next, A for authoritative. So um, you are an authority on what you're writing about, hopefully. You, you've done a lot of research. Maybe you've been covering this beat for 20 years. You know all the people, you know the big trends, you know the concepts. Um, if you're writing a book based on personal experience, um, that could be the source of your authority. If you've done research for your book, um, maybe it's set in a fantasy world, but you've spent years creating the fantasy magic system. Um, maybe your book is hard sci-fi, but you have a background as a physicist that you're bringing into it. Uh, focus on what your authority is. What makes you personally authoritative? And people want to connect with that. They want to see that expressed in your writing. So um, like a, a chat GPT can know everything about everything. Yeah. But it doesn't have your deep personal authority as to what is important and what isn't so it can give you the general sense of what the internet says but you as an authority are the only one who can tell people what you think as an expert on the subject so again lean into that um because when you give your opinion as an authority that matters and, and the fact that it matters is, is something that's going to be worthwhile and valuable for readers. Then we have N is for novel. So you want something that's new, that has novelty in it, that uh, has a different perspective or, or a unique twist to it. So if you're a journalist, this is easy. Put news into your writing. Um, Chat GPT won't know stuff that hasn't been published yet. You do know this stuff because you went out and you reported it. You went to the conference, you spoke to the experts, you conducted the research, you have created new information. Highlight that. If you're writing um, a, a, a press release, if you're writing a news article, if you're writing a white paper, whatever it is, lean into the fact that this is brand new information nobody else has. If you're writing fiction, I, I, I used to be able to say, oh, the AIs, they're not creative. And unfortunately, they, 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 they're getting pretty creative. So you're going to have to try to be more creative than the AI. Um, good luck. Uh, it's, it's kind of hard. Um, so I, I don't really have any good advice here on the fiction side, um, because what I've seen the AIs come up with has been really, really good. 
So um, again, you have to you have to do prompt engineering. You have to get it to give you what you want, and that is not easy. It's not trivial. It's not the first thing that comes out of ChatGPT when you type in "give me the give me this." Um, but um, if you're doing it well, it it can be pretty creative, and you're you're going to be compete as a writer. You're competing against uh, the best that that people using ChatGPT are producing. Um, and, and then information on how to get it to do that is going to get out there. So um, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be looking at this uh, and this is going to be the, the something that I'm personally going to be trying to figure out. How do you get creative at a time when there's artificial creativity? But uh, let's move on. Um, you is for unique. Um, so um, you are a special person. You're the only one of the kind. Um, and the stuff that you produce is unique to you. So the original Mona Lisa is unique. There's only one of it. There's a million copies, but they're not the real thing. And even though there's a million copies that maybe nobody but an expert can distinguish from the real thing, um, the real thing is the one that's worth all the money, not the copy. Um, and, and the way people gauge that this is the real piece of art is through provenance, um, through, you know, its reputation, you know, all, all, all that other stuff that makes people understand that this is unique. So you have to lean into that. <laughs> so what is it that makes your writing unique? Um, if it's a press release or a news article that you're writing, you have to find the angle that makes this special. This isn't just more of the same old, same old. There's something new here that's different. Um, now, the new and different thing could be your personal take on it. Maybe you have a humorous or a sarcastic take on the news. So you're doing the same news article that maybe 10 other news publications are doing, but you're doing it in your own unique style. Um, so when you're writing, lean into that. Um, have a unique style and brand identity. This is your brand. This is your unique voice. And the more distinctive and the less generic your writing is, the more of an advantage you're going to have in this, I was going to say brave new world, but it's kind of a creepy new world. So, so yeah, so develop a very unique, distinctive, authorial voice. And again, this kind of goes counter towards what people have been doing for a while, which is to write in a very accessible, um, uh, uh, accessible, friendly style that's very familiar. Um, so, so there's a, a um, like if you, if you, I mean, I read a lot of books, and the writing styles tend to fall into a, you know, one of a few handful of types and once it's in that type it gets kind of bland um like everybody writes in the same voice you know um except the authors really stand out and they have a distinctive voice and you can recognize their voice when you open a book even if you maybe don't see the cover you can tell who wrote it because of the author style so it is it is hard, hard, hard to develop a unique style and voice. Um, and we're gonna have to. Um, and yes, the AI will copy it. Um, but then it will be a copy. It won't be you. It'll be it so it, it won't be the Mona Lisa, it'll be a copy of the Mona Lisa. It won't be a Hunter S. Thompson book. It's a knockoff by somebody trying to sound like Hunter S. Thompson. Is, see the difference? So you want to be the Mona Lisa. You want to be the original. You want to be the Hunter S. Thompson. You want to be the Hemingway. 
not whoever comes along afterwards and tries to copy your voice using chat GPT, which they can, they will. So, um, so get out ahead of it and own it, own that voice, um, which is a huge marketing challenge and marketing is the hardest thing for all writers to do, but you have to do it. And finally, um, T for trustworthy, um, honoring implicit promises to your readers. So in the new space, um, this is pretty easy. Trustworthy means that you're reliable. You're not uh, bought and paid for by the advertisers. Um, when you make a mistake, you fix the mistake. Uh, you publish the correction, you update the article. You do, you know, you follow the good, solid principles of journalism. Um, you fact check things. You cite credible sources. All, all that stuff, right? On the fiction side, uh, this is a little bit more of a nebulous concept. And so here you want to develop a trusted relationship with your readers where they can trust you to give them a satisfying reading, a satisfying ending, where they can trust you to tell a fast-paced story, where they can trust you to have a clever twist at the end. So uh, it, it's it's possible to have trust in a brand. I mean, people kind of trust Apple, for example, to do a nice job with their iPhones, or they trust Marvel to do like a good, fat, fun movie. But honestly, when I go see a Marvel movie, and uh, say Taika Waititi uh, directed it, I trust him as a director more than I trust Marvel as a generic entity. Um, and because I've been disappointed in a couple of recent Marvel movies, well, one mainly, um, that one with the Celestials, that was just weird. But... Um, uh, yeah, so so we kind of trust individual directors. We trust individual writers to to tell us that story, to to tell us to have that particular vision, and and again, that's a branding thing and a relationship building thing and having a solid track record of work kind of thing, and um cultivating that reader base and that reputation and all that other stuff so all this is hard to do um this is none of it's none of this is going to be easy um but i think if we do this we can survive as authors and as journalists and so yeah so in the description box below i'm going to post a link to the peanut article I did for Metastellar, which is about peanut for fiction writers. And I'm going to post a link to the peanut article I did for our sister publication, Hyper Good Business. And that's going to be focused on peanut for nonfiction writers. And I'm also going to post a link to EAT. And that's Google's principles, E-E-A-T. Um, so you can see what Google themselves has to say about it, which I think is pretty good advice for anyone who wants to you know survive on the web these days because search engines are going to be slammed with all this chat gpt generated content and almost all of it's going to be useless it's not going to have that personal component it's not going to be authoritative it's not going to be trustworthy it's not going to be novel it's not going to be unique it's going to be the same old same old just change slightly so it's not plagiarized but it's it's going to be basically the same stuff. So the search engines are going to be deprioritizing all of it. And that means that there's an opportunity for real human writers with strong voices and personalities and perspectives to make an impact. So there's there's still opportunity. That's what I'm saying. There's still an opportunity and there's still hope Um before we go all go back to school and become plumbers, um, may, maybe give this peanut thing a try. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, if you like this kind of content, um, subscribe. Oh, and um, 
Metastellar is supported by uh, folks at Patreon. So we love you guys. Thank you so much. All the donations go to support original fiction at Metastellar. And we publish uh, short stories, fantasy, science fiction, horror, um, both originals and reprints. And we're currently in our spring submission cycle until March 31st. And yes, we do um, allow stories that have been written with the help of AI because we want to promote writers no matter how they write, including those who use AI for grammar checking, for uh, a story idea generation, and as kind of as a, as a writing coach or assistant. There's so many ways to use AI in a, in a legitimate, helpful way that still helps you develop yourself as an author, that helps bring out your unique voice, that helps bring out your personality. Um, and if you just turn everything over to a chat GPT, then the result is gonna be kind of bland and kind of unoriginal. It's gonna it's gonna sound like a Wikipedia article. So um yeah, so so use AI if if you want to, but use it to 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 help bring out your humanity instead of uh, replacing it and some subsuming it into something computer generated and ordinary. Yeah, you you you're not going to be able to succeed by being ordinary. You will, but you will be able to succeed, I believe, by being special and unique and human. So, okay, everybody, I will see you, I guess, on Friday for the free Friday thing. Okay, um, that's where we review the top 10 free science fiction fantasy books on Amazon. And if you don't want to miss any of those uh, articles, um, I have a link to our newsletter um, subscription below. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.